What is up, everybody? We are back for Ukrainian footballers number four. Welcome to the video. You guys like the drip? Shout out to my sister. Look at this hoodie. Absolutely fire Ukrainian drip. Look at that. Insane. Anyways, let's get right to it. First big talking point is Mikhailo Mudrik. I feel like he's been the talking point a lot recently. But my guy finally got his first goals for Chelsea, for Ukraine, and then that worldy versus Arsenal that we're going to talk about. So, talked about the Fulham goal in the other video. And um, in the international break, Mudrik finally scores for Ukraine. He blanked out versus Macedonia, but he still played well. And then versus Malta, towards the end of the game, absolute banger. Just in St. Gareth Bale-esque goal. On the left side, that little chop cut, dribbling, half the field, banger from outside the box, well-deserved goal, finally has his first goal for Ukraine, and what a goal it was. We ain't doing no pity penalties or tap-ins, you know, he scored a straight banger, and props to him. Finally, he's got his goal, and he could, hopefully he could start popping off for Ukraine, you know. Next, his goal versus Arsenal. It was just written in the stars. It was, that was funny, I'm not gonna lie. Out of all games, he scores um, against Arsenal after... Obviously not scoring for a while, but now he's on this good run of form, which is good for him. And did he mean it or did he not? Drop a comment below. Let me know what you guys think. I personally think he did not mean it. I think he was crossing it far post to Sterling, putting it in the danger area. And it so happened to go in. I don't care. We're taking it. Mikhailo Mudrik, banger versus Arsenal. Good game overall, though. Um, it's funny when Zinchenko fouled Mudrik, too. That was kind of crazy. Big game like this, two Ukrainians against each other is crazy um very wild yeah big moment for mudrik that sally and everything jude bellingham if he meant it if he didn't who cares it was a great goal hopefully he can start balling out now next up so going along with the international break ukraine got the results they got the 2-0 win versus macedonia and the 3-1 win versus malta which is good they got the six points only problem is they were not very good performances to be honest against teams like this they should be comfortably winning and they got the game against Italy left. Huge, huge game. Basically, they just have to win that game. And they're going to the Euro 2024. And if they don't, they have a chance of going through the playoff system through getting third place. But we just basically have to win. There's a chance we could go through with a draw if Macedonia helps us versus Italy. But we can't rely on that. We need, we need to beat Italy. We need to be, beat the big boys. And speaking of Italy, Tonali recently got that 10-month ban from um, sports betting on himself and his own um, games. So he's going to be a big miss. He's out for 10 months. Uh, Tonali, uh, Zaniola, Fagioli. Three potential big players for Italy might be out. And Chiesa has been on and off with injuries. So that might be for Ukraine a little bit of a boost. But it's still Italy. And Ukraine has not been having very convincing performances. So that will be a huge, huge game these last two games not as convincing as i would have liked but we still got the result which is good first game sudaku scored kind of a lucky deflection and karavayev scored that banger from half field empty net but um the keeper has no keeper was way out so uh good props to karavayev um and malta 3-1 that i don't i can't believe we can see we played horribly but got that one lucky own goal got the dovic penalty which mudrik won and then that mudrik banger which was fire we need we need to get the goal differential up so i thought i thought we need to do better but still these that some of these goals might play a big role because um we only have one goal less than italy artem dovbik been balling out for girona another two goals last weekend in their win against almeria so now for the season he's got five goals and two assists so great start for dovbik so far and then they're playing today friday while i'm recording so uh, we'll see if he gets more goals here. And Sehankov still hasn't been playing, even though he's back to training for Girona. Um, he missed the international break with Ukraine. But apparently he's back to training, so he should be back soon. And hopefully we have him for that big game against Italy, November 20th. Massive. Zinchenko. So he has not been in the best form. International break, he was... I don't think he was that good. He seemed out of it. He seemed like just mentally not in it. You know, he was he was decent, but feel like not performing to his usual standards. Versus Chelsea, he was okay with his passing, decent, but defensively he was getting cooked every time. He got the yellow card against Mudrik, and he got subbed off at halftime. So hopefully he gets out of that slump and he starts playing better. He also Tomiyasu also played again in the Champions League instead of him. Mikolenko. 
He's been pretty decent. Last weekend, he locked up Salah in the Everton-Liverpool game, but unfortunately, Salah still scored two goals, so I don't know if he really locked him up. So I'll, I'll probably until that point. But he's been playing pretty good. He's um, had a good form and fitness, but Everton is just dupsia. So, like, I, I, I don't know. Like, Everton's just not been that good. Yarmoluk. Yehor Yarmoluk. I saw him play this summer also when I went to the preseason game. Um, he got his debut. He came on for Brentford. He finally got his Premier League debut. So, congratulations to Yarmoluk. What a guy. He's got a bright future ahead of him. Yeah, so he played a bit for Brentford. He came off um, the bench as a substitute. So, good for him. Great, great um, future ahead for him. Ilya Zabarne plays basically every single minute for Burnmouth. He's been fantastic, but Burnmouth hasn't even got a win yet this season. So uh, hopefully they step it up and do not get relegated because we need Zabarne in the prem. Or Zabarne just go, can go to a better team. But he's been very essential for Burnmouth and Ukraine. Yaremchuk still blows my mind how he went to Valencia. I don't know, I don't know how, but he's been dupsa. I mean, I think he's been terrible for Ukraine. Valencia, I honestly have not watched. I know he scored an offside goal that didn't count. But besides that, he's mostly been coming off the bench here and there. Ruslan Malinovsky, he's been all right for Genoa, but the expectations are higher. Like, I feel like he just hit 30 and he kind of fell off. Uh, I love Ruslan Malinovsky. Absolute banger of a shot and crazy good assist. But I feel like he stopped trying as much, stopped running as much. He's gotten older and he's, I don't know. He, for Ukraine, he hasn't been that good. Just super aggressive, gets yellow cards all the time. Genoa, you'd think he'd go there after playing at Atalanta and Marseille and the experience he has just being an outright starter and just balling out. Not the case. He's mostly on the bench there too, which is not a good sign. I don't know what's going on. Yarmolenko, our boy, our legend Yarmolenko. He got knee surgery, so he will be out for Dynamo Kiev for a good four months, roughly. So he got surgery apparently on a lot of little things on his knee. So a lot of different little ligaments and stuff. I'm not sure if he had full tear. I don't think he had any full tears because he would be out even longer, but he's out for around four months. So he's getting older. He's getting a lot of injuries. Um, hopefully he comes back strong, can finish up and keep playing for the Dynamo for a year or two. Ukrainian league. I don't know what is going on in our Patshaliha in Ukraine. So we got at this moment, October 27th, Friday. So this might come out in a day or two. But at this moment, we got Krev Bas in first place. Polisia, Zhitomir in second. Shakhtar in third. Dnipro Uden in fourth. Ruch Lviv in fifth. Chornomorets, Odessa in sixth. Dynamo Kiev in seventh. They've been not good. And Kolos in eighth. What, what is going on? I, I, I don't know what's going on in this league. This league, this league is just like, it's very funny to me. I don't, I have no clue what's happening. Yeah, that's, that's the Ukrainian footballer updates for now. Uh, let me know if I missed anything. Guys, let me know um, if you want to hear about something else. I don't know, your opinions on all these games and all these ballers and what you think is going to happen on November 20th versus Italy. Do you think we have what it takes to beat Italy? That's a very good question. I don't know. Hopefully, luck will be on our side and we score some goal off brilliance from, I don't know, Mudrik Dovbik, Tsehankov, whatever, and park the bus. But hope for the best. We're going to root for Ukraine and see how things go. And let me know how you guys think Mudrik is going to do now that he finally has some goals. Let me know what you think is going to happen um, in that Ukraine-Italy game, your score predictions, and any other opinions or thoughts you have about our Ukrainian ballers. Peace out, everybody. Have a great day. Slava Ukraini. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Peace. Thank you.